Hello, uh, welcome to those who are watching this later on and to those in the room here. Uh, we, are, we are gonna kick off our service tonight. You could say service, but our youth and young adults group. Uh, if you do happen to be watching this later on and you would like to join us at some stage, please just send us a message, let us know, um, and then come here on a Thursday night, drop in and uh, yeah, you can, you can join us in the room. You can also contribute to three things if you want to. I know that uh, I've been getting a few texts here and there from people about three things. So uh, yes, we, we would love to hear from you if you would like to add to that. So three things for this week. Let's get going. I'm going to invite Kiani to come up. I clicked too early, I got onto the three things. What's this, Kiani? Ah, uh, yes, the election. The election. Uh, yeah, it's not over. It's still going. Still going to go on for a while, apparently. Um, have you been following? Yeah. Yeah? So I'm on placement right now at, at a school, and all the kids have just been pulling it up in class. And oh, really? keep shutting their laptops. That much interest? Yeah, yeah? actually. It's really interesting. That is interesting, because yeah. usually, you know, kids aren't that interested in the yeah. US election. But yeah, it has become a bit of a... It's funny, in a year where it's kind of... There hasn't been as much of a, a build overseas for it, there, it's all of a sudden it's like, this is the one show that everybody wants to watch. <laughs> We want to see what happens. Um, I don't know if everyone's scared about the outcomes, but I am. Uh, <laughs> but it is interesting. Um, it is really interesting. Apparently, Biden's close. Yeah. Apparently. Close. Apparently. So, yeah. But who knows what will happen? But this is news. So, uh, interesting. And, of course, we had an election ourselves uh, in Queensland, um, which, uh, yeah, spoilers if you didn't know. Uh, so <laughs> Labor got back in because uh, I don't think I don't think our kids in schools were actually as interested in the state election as they are in the U.S. election. I, yeah. yeah, it's a bit of a strange, yeah, odd thing. States. Wrong states as U.S. Yeah, okay, yeah, true, <laughs> true. Um, <laughs> but talking of states, uh, the next one is uh, uh, yeah. the football. Well, I, I'm going to call it rugby because I don't think it's football, but that's my personal oh, discrimination right. against it. Uh, <laughs> so I just say the rugby. Um, uh, yes, so uh, Queensland won the first uh, state of origin once, once again. This was in Adelaide, so this is also weird. This yeah. is strange. It was done in Adelaide. Um, did you watch it? Yeah, I did with my dad. Oh, that's yeah. nice. I didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I go for Queensland. He was born in Queensland. He goes for the Blues because he was born in New South Wales. And, yeah, we were really surprised by the outcome. Yeah. Yeah, looking at the teams, yeah. you wouldn't guess it. Yeah, that's right. I think most people actually did think, well, okay, unbiased people <laughs> may have thought that New South Wales were going to get through. Yeah. I think Stuart thought that, just in case, you know, that's <laughs> Reverend Perry. I think he was hoping. But, uh, yeah, so that's interesting. But, yes, this, this, is, this is definitely news. And it is, it is good to be able to have these things um, back, even if it is a bit different. Yeah, um, sure. it's, it's still cool. Uh, the last of our three things, I think it's a very, very important one because uh, I'm kind of convinced that my wife subliminally messaged this one into my brain this week. Christmas is coming. Yeah. Did you know? Christmas is coming. Uh, and I think it's not just my wife that's subliminally messaging us. I think this is the, uh, the shopping centres and everywhere you go, all of a sudden we hit, we hit November and, yep, Christmas music. Yeah. Everywhere. Do you like the, do you like the Christmas? Yeah, I like Christmas, but mm. I think Hmm. I went into Kmart and they were playing Jingle Bells. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> Too early, guys. In October. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, yeah, it is strange. I mean, they've started setting up the the um the Santa thing in Rabina Town Centre, which is is interesting. But I'd imagine it's probably a good idea because you know getting as many people through the Santa yeah, thing sure. this year might be tricky. Uh, but yeah. Christmas is coming. Yeah. Any plans for Christmas? If you want to yeah. share it with the whole wide world? <laughs> <What'd> you... <laughs> yeah, you're <all> <laughs> Excellent. Don't RSVP. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is... Just text Kiani, her number is... No. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> that, uh... Yeah, no, no, yeah, but, but yeah. Yeah, so I usually go back to Taiwan for Christmas because hmm. that's where my mom's from. So this is one of the first times I'll actually be in Australia for Christmas. So it would be really nice to have Christmas with my family. Nice. Is, yeah. That is nice. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And I think people aren't travelling as much, obviously. Um, so, yeah, I think there's quite a bit of that going on, um, whether yeah. digitally or actually people. People. Um, I think we've got a pretty sweet deal at home. Most of the family come to us because we've got the little children. It's a good deal. I don't think it's going to last forever, but <laughs> at the moment it's pretty good. So, yeah. 
Very cool. There is one more, and I, I didn't, because uh, it's three things, I couldn't officially make it four things. Uh, so <laughs> I'm just going to throw this one in there. Uh, there's actually a really interesting thing uh, that was discovered uh, within the last day or so, and it's that, uh, I've already told you this, so you know, you're already open to it, but you guys online, you have no idea what's happening here. Okay, yeah. so this is quite amazing. There is an animal, there is an animal that is bioluminescent, right? Okay, bioluminescent, and when you put UV light on it and stuff and it glows, there's, no one will guess what animal it is. It's a platypus. And they didn't know this. How did, how did scientists, how did like biologists, like I'm thinking marine biologists, how did they not know? How, did, how is this a discovery? But I mean, it's incredible. Like, I feel like it's a bit of a niche thing to find out. Like, yeah. You have to have the light. Who was actually the putting the light over there? Platypus. Yeah. Like, it seems yeah. yeah, that's right. Had nobody done this? That's right. It seems seems yeah. crazy. But uh, yeah, so uh, the platypus can do everything, apparently. Yeah. It's amazing. It's like the most multifunction animal in the world. Jack but, of all trades. Yep, jack of all <laughs> trades. So if, yeah, I think if, yeah, let's all just want to be platypuses. Yeah, I think that's sure. it. Anyway, so on that very... Um, clear logical note let's <laughs> let's jump into what we're doing for tonight which is actually where we're looking at themes in the bible we'll continuing to do this each week and this week's theme is is uh not meant to be heavy but it is the day of the lord okay so the idea of the day of the lord what does that mean uh so the video is going to come up for you guys online and we're going to watch it in the room here and have a chat and we'll see you after bye the day of the lord it's a phrase in the Bible that religious people use, usually when talking about the end of the world. Yeah, things like Armageddon or the apocalypse. You might be familiar with this image of Jesus returning on a white horse. He's got a sword to bring final judgment. And everyone wants to know, how will it all go down? So a lot of these images come from the last book of the Bible, but to understand them, you have to go back to the first book. When the story begins, we watch God create an amazing world, and then he gives humans power to rule over it on his behalf. But the humans are tempted by this mysterious, unhuman character who offers them a promise. You could define good and evil on your own terms and put yourselves in God's place. Which is what they do. And the resulting stories are about the broken relationships and violence that results. Yeah, this promise creates huge problems. Now everyone has to protect themselves and fight for survival, and they're all using death as this weapon to gain power. It all leads to a story about the building of the city of Babylon. Or in Hebrew, Babel. Everyone comes together to elevate themselves to the place of God. And God knows how devastating this could be. A whole culture redefining good and evil as if they are God. So God confuses their language and scatters them. Now from here on, Babylon becomes like an icon in the biblical story. It's an image that represents humanity's corporate rebellion against God. And the next time we see it is in the story of ancient Egypt. Yeah, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, he feels threatened by these immigrant Israelites. He starts killing all of the boys, enslaving the rest. And this is really evil. Yeah, Egypt's like this bigger, badder Babylon. They take care of themselves at the expense of others by redefining evil as good. And so God turns Pharaoh's evil back on him. His pride drives him forward and he's swallowed up by death. Now after this great deliverance, the Israelites sing a song about how God is their warrior who liberated them from evil. And the Israelites referred to this moment as the day. The day they were rescued from a corrupt human system. And every year since then, the Israelites have celebrated the day of their liberation with this symbolic meal of a sacrificial lamb that's called Passover. Eventually, Israel comes into its own land, have their own kings, and they face new enemies. So that past day of the Lord, celebrated every Passover, begins to generate hope that God will bring the day again to save Israel from new threats. Now, out in the hills was a sheep herder named Amos. He was appointed by God as a prophet to announce shocking news to Israel, that God was bringing another day of the Lord against his enemies, and this time the target is Israel. What? Sadly, Israel's leaders had also redefined good and evil for themselves, resulting in corruption and violence. So God's people have become like Babylon, the oppressed 
become oppressors. Babylon seems like a trap no one can escape. And so the day of the Lord comes upon Israel. They're conquered, taken captive into exile. And from then on, Israel suffered under the rule of continuous oppressive empires. This is the story Jesus was born into. Yeah, in his day, the oppressive empire over Israel is Rome. So is Jesus going to confront Rome, take him out? Well, no. Jesus saw the real enemy as that mysterious, unhuman evil. The evil that's lured Babylon, Egypt, Rome, Israel, all humanity has given in to evil's promise of power. This is what Jesus resisted alone in the wilderness when he was tempted to exploit his power for self-interest. But he didn't. And after that, he started to confront the effects of evil on others. Yeah, he started saying that he was going to Jerusalem for Passover for a final showdown to confront the evil of Israel and Rome by dying. Dying? I mean, that feels like losing. Jesus was going to let evil exhaust all of its power on him, using its only real weapon, death. Jesus knew that God's love and life were even more powerful, that he could overcome evil by becoming the Passover lamb, giving his life in an act of love. And something changed that day. When Jesus defeated evil, he opened up a new way for anyone to escape from Babylon and discover this new kind of power, this new way of being human. Okay, so something changed. But the power of evil is still alive and well, and we keep building new versions of Babylon. Right, and so the last book of the Bible, the Revelation, points to the future and final day of the Lord. It's when God's kingdom comes to confront Babylon the Great, this image of all the corrupt nations of the world. Yeah, this is it, Armageddon, final judgment. How is Jesus gonna finish off evil? Well, that's not how you'd expect. In the Revelation, the victorious Jesus is symbolized by a sacrificial bloody lamb. And then when Jesus does arrive in the end, riding his white horse to confront evil, he's bloody before the battle even starts. Pre-bloodied? That's a strange image. Yeah, it's because Jesus isn't out for our blood. Rather, he overcame with his blood when he died for his enemies. And the sword is in his mouth. It's a symbol of Jesus' authority to define good and evil and hold us accountable when he brings final justice once and for all. And so, in the meantime, the day of the Lord is an invitation to resist the culture of Babylon. And it's a promise that God will one day free our world from corruption and bring about the new things that he has in store. Hey guys, thanks for, uh, for watching. Uh, if you had any questions about that, because it is a bit of an interesting uh, one to, to talk about, we had some good chats here in the room. If you, if you want to reach out um, and have a chat at any time, please send us an email um, or yeah, give us a ring here at the church. We'd love to talk to you. I um, hope that was good. hope it was meaningful. And uh, we will hopefully catch you sometime soon, either online or here in the room. God bless.